in the origin of metazone we will be discussing about the soft bodied invertebrates and how we are able to gather that evidence of their bodies because we have seen in the origin of metazoans that earlier these were the organisms that were formed and these organisms had some soft body uh, because the earlier formed organisms don't necessarily have the skeletal remains so when they do not have the skeletal remains that means uh, or any hard structures in their body it is very hard to collect their fossil evidence and of course there is some fossil evidence related to the soft bodied organism and we will be discussing about that but uh, today we are going to discuss about the soft bodied invertebrates that were the original metazoans so we do have inadequate fossil record out of 25 are so commonly recognized animal phyla fewer than 9 that means 35% have an adequate fossil record what is the reason behind the losing the rest of the fossil record why, why do we not have a complete fossil record the reason being that ancestor of those phyla they were not necessarily the having any skeleton or their fossilization was not happening so due to that we do have an inadequate fossil record and that also gives us some you know a lesser information as compared to the other phyla so a number of large soft-bodied phyla lack a preservable uh, skeleton that means any skeleton that can be preserved if uh, we the human have the bones which are the harder ones snails may have some uh, the shells right so any organism that has a soft part it is much more easier to be fossilized but uh, an organism just like a bacteria bacteria do not have any hard structures they are single celled organism or the jellyfish have you seen ever uh, the fossil of a jellyfish or you can see the impression of those but it is very very faint and with the time they cannot during the process of fossilization they, they can be uh, you know lost in time so a soft bodied organ uh, bodies forms are preserved in the fossil ledger starton so the fossil ledger starton when we were discussing about the fossil form uh, or the making of the fossils we were we discussed that that means these are the layers of the earth are particular regions where it was very conducive it was very helpful environment to form a fossil so at that those places even the soft bodied organism were able to fossilize so we do see these organism but you see that not all the organisms are present in one particular place so a lot of organism we have lost but some organism we do have in the preserved form in the fossil larger starton so here there is a significance of worm like animals at the pre cambrian and cambrian boundary and the postulated origin of some major clades if you see in the reference book you would see the names of these organisms as well so these are the original metazoans and if you see carefully these are sort of worm like consistency so you might not see any preserved worm because they are very very soft bodied and these are easily disturbed by the forces of nature as well as these are easily decayed organisms so as long as they are having any hard structures it is very hard for them to make a hard fossil so here in the next slide there is an example of burgess shell burgess shell is the uh, region in the canadian rockies um, and they are and other exceptionally preserved fauna suggests that many of these soft bodies group dominated certain marine paleoclimates so uh, marine paleo communities paleo means the ancient so marine paleo communities were in fact had these organism a lot of these uh, and how can we say that we have the evidence in the form of burgess shell or any other larger starton or exceptionally pre uh, preserved fauna so there is an example of platydendron the platydendron uh, is the ancestor of uh, is thought to be an ancestor of platyhelminthes so platyhelminths or the flatworms are bilateral animals and these are soft bodied so we have an example or of in the middle cambrian burgess shell and 
that is ascribed that it might be uh, the ancestor of platyhelminthes. And then there comes the polychaetes. Polychaetes are the nematodes. These are the diverse uh, polychaete fauna has been described from the Burgessia. Even contain the Canada spinoza. Uh, it is similar to the living polychaete. So the organism, the polychaetes that we see today, these are somehow related or look like the Canada spinoza, which is much more alike. So in that we can say that on, not only based on the morphology, but there is some evidence that if we infer that only on the basis of morphology, we can say that they are somehow related. And then there comes the paddle worms. Uh, paddle worms are uh, uh, most uh, complete uh, fossil record is uh, present for the, these organisms. And that their record is enhanced by the relatively common preservation of element of their phosphatic jaw. So they have one particular part of their body which is made up of phosphates. So it is jaw with the help of the, because they are the land dwelling organisms and they make burrows in the earth. These were able to make, uh, the, they evolved a phosphatic structure in their proboscis that is called scol, uh, uh, codont, scoli codonts. These are the jaws, the phosphatic jaws. And these hard st uh, uh, phosphatic structure were able to survive. And on the basis of that, we have their fossil record or rather a complete fossil record of these organisms. 